Well, hello there, humans, happy earthlings, whoever you are, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, and if you're lucky enough indeed to be doing it too. Welcome back to the channel. Um, this is the Action X. What it also is, is um, a leftover from the... <laughs> The, the East German doping program of the 70s and early 80s when they won all those uh, Olympic medals with uh, sprinters and things who then went on to have great careers in uh, medical research. This thing is... I love the Carnarvon. If you take a Carnarvon and you drop an absolute buttload of armor all over it to make the turret even more impenetrable um and then because it's heavier and realism is a thing you give it an engine that's about 25 percent larger you get this <laughs> this is what the gun is this is what the tank is uh, i don't i don't know how to, this is like i'm gonna show you in a second the side-by-side -side armor profile it's amazing and just so you know, like if we if we talk about these two tanks, the Carnarvon and the Action X, they are the same tank. It's like you went to a car dealership and you said, I'd like to buy a Carnarvon. And the guy said, yeah, but have you got the tow package for the Carnarvon, buddy? And while you're at it, why don't we upgrade you from the vinyl to the leather seats and we'll get the non-scratch second coat of heavy-duty rust-proof paint and then you walk away and you've got the, the Action X instead of the Carnarvon. That's, that's exactly how it goes. And I've got to say, I haven't seen a lot of them because generally people shy away from Tier 8 crate tanks. So they're willing to pay that kind of premium for a Tier 10 tank that's in a crate because Tier 10 is Tier 10. It's the piece de la resistance of Blitz. It's, the, it's where the big, big dogs roam. But that's not the case with Tier 8. There are already so many very, very good Tier 8 tanks and premiums that people tend to look at these tanks, the crate tanks, as tanks that are just... Well, they're, they're not as popular. But if you were to put a Carnarvon in a crate, this is how it would look. And I have that age-old issue of saying... Look, I don't like that you're paying for a crate tank, but if you're paying for a crate tank, then you may as well get a tank that's worth paying for a crate tank. And that's certainly the case with this tank. And mostly because of the armor profile. The armor profile is everything that you could ever want in a tier 8 heavy. It's phenomenal. And it does so many things so very, very well. The DPM, uh, it's the same gun. The OQF 20-pounder. Uh, type B barrel, uh, both tanks rock the same gun. This is the armor profile of the Carnarvon when looked at through the APCR of the Panther. So you're looking at about 238 millimeters of pen. And there's a lot of red there on the front upper plate. That's great. And the turret is red on the sides and red on the mantlet. And when you get it up to use the 10 degrees of gun depression, it looks like that. This is the Carnarvon Action X. And one of the reasons is like the, the armor profile is just stronger, but the spaced armor on the side it's like most of the spaced armor you will see on tanks is it will stop heat rounds because it is so um, effective at that but it doesn't stop APCR rounds all the time because the spaced armor is quite low it's like 20 millimeters of spaced armor you're looking at like 190 millimeters of spaced armor here there are parts of this turret where you have need like 600 millimeters and more um, to pen and that's insane like, the turret is absolutely unpenable apart from the hatch, just about. The hatch is penable, but it's a small target. And the gun is typically everything you'd expect in a Carnarvon. It's 0.29 dispersion. Uh, it's super high pen, uh, which is what Carnarvon guns are renowned for. You're looking at a 190 Alpha gun with 226 millimeters of penetration on your AP rounds. You have 226 millimeters of penetration, which is excellent. Um, you have 150 more DPM on the Carnarvon Action X. Uh, and then that means your rate of fire is like slightly faster, like... 6% faster. And that's where the that's where the extra um, benefit comes in in terms of... Yeah, look, the other thing that's crazy is... So you've got more armor. So you'd think it'd be a slower tank. It's... Uh, you'd be wrong. 
It's got a 1,045 horsepower engine versus the 891 horsepower engine in the Carnarvon itself. And better um, better horsepower just means a higher power to weight ratio. You have a two kilometer an hour faster, uh, faster uh, top end speed, but you have 8% more horsepower to weight, uh, which translates to just an all round more efficient a mobility profile that allows you to move about the ground a whole lot easier. Um, and your traverse is just flat out better. Uh, you have more traverse, which, you know, you're at 40 degrees of hull traverse and you're looking at a turret with 43 degrees of turret traverse, which, you know, is pretty bloody good. Uh, whereas you're at 36 degrees of hull traverse on the Carnarvon and you're at 43 degrees of turret traverse there. So you've got more armor, but you've got the same turret traverse. Uh, more armor, but better speed. And uh, you just got more armor. So what kind of tank is it? Well, it's good. <laughs> I love the Carnarvon. I thought the Carnarvon was one of the more undersung heroes of tier eight heavy tanking. I've used it for ages and people have always bagged me for it. I think the Carnarvon is crackerjack. Um, you get used to using uh, using the tank as a hull down monster, but it's even more so now. You can, like, this is like having a T-32's turret, but with a, a tiny little hatch at the back right. And if you get it in a position where you can use all 10 degrees of gun depression, it still maintains that. Like, look at this thing move. For a tank, it's a big tank. Like, look how big it is. It's a big-ass tank. A lot of people don't realize just how big, Big, like the IS-3 is smaller than this tank, right? Um, a lot of people don't realize just how big this thing is uh, compared to the big dogs. Like, I was I was wondering what was going on there because our lights just stopped to look at me because I was in an action X. I'm like, our lights are dot, dot, dot. And no one's looking over here and our lights have just wandered around. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, great. So I'm going to have to go over here and stop the whole flank. And... I can just go hull down in this thing and it's great. Like, good luck. Good luck against this thing hull down. The gun is way too good. The DPM is really good for a tier 8 heavy tank. It's better than the tier 8 mediums. Um, you've got an incredibly accurate weapon. You've got a very low aim time. You've got a turret that's not going to get penned. And you can deal with things at extreme range with very good penetration. And that basically means that, yeah, you're a great tank. How do you use it? Find somewhere to go hull down and be excited by the result. Now, let's talk about the fun stuff. I got the coffee here. Let's talk about the fun stuff. <laughs> Why are we just seeing so many tanks that are making our tier 8 tech tree tanks or tier 10 tech tree tanks redundant? If you were going to run a tier 8 uh, tournament, You'd run the Carnarvon before you run... Uh, you'd run the Carnarvon Action X before you ran the Carnarvon. Um, if you were going to run a Tier 8 tournament, you know, you'd... You'd probably run tanks like... I mean, there's so many good... Watch this. So, I forgot to mention this. Your upper plate is insane. Your upper plate's insane. And with 10 degrees of gun depression, um, this IS-5, I can just keep firing down with 225 millimeters of pen into his... Uh, Pike Nose, which is doing absolutely nothing in terms of putting me off. And I'm not even using APCR. I'm using AP because your upper plate just in a flat front-on mode is 240 millimeters of pen required. If you move it side to side, it gets up to 270 millimeters pretty bloody quick. And if you're at like zero range... It goes up to, like, if the, if you're face-hugging, um, the top of that upper plate can go up to as much as 300 millimeters because they just can't get the gun down, right? They can't get the gun down anywhere apart from the top, and that's all at 295, 300 millimeters. So, why would you take any other hull-down tank over the Action X? Well, you wouldn't. Uh, it's like the Mark I Defender. Why would you drive the Centurion 1? Uh, or the Carnarvon, for that matter, we can run the Mark One Defender. Well, you wouldn't. <laughs> it's like... 
It's just, see, for ages, the stock tier 8 medium has been a tank with between 7 degrees and 10 degrees of gun depression, uh, between 180 and 220 alpha, uh, and between about 2k and 2.3k DPM. A lot of them don't have very strong turrets either. And then you have a Mark One Defender turn up with those kind of numbers, but in a, a four clip auto loader, and you get the Action X turn up with those kind of numbers, but more DPM in a quite a mobile bloody heavy for a tank with this much armor. And you immediately start going, well, this is just bollocks. Why would you try and compete with these guys? And it's a bit frustrating for me because I play a lot of tier seven and tier eight now because I'm so so sick of playing against American Lights at tier 10. Like, you know, the meta is just so god awful at the moment. If you have good lights on your team, you are so much more of an effective team. And if you have bad lights on your team, you suck. And that's the meta. And admittedly, it will change. And it's changed before and it'll change again. And I'm being a big sook about it. But I, I go down and I play these lower tiers. And I end up playing against just like what is with this power creep man like what is with it that object 252u is uh, the is5 i mean all the tech tree tanks where have all the tech tree tanks gone like look at this engagement and there's so many premium tanks here and so many really really strong premium tanks and the tech tree tanks are just forget about it Absolutely forget about it. And look how many bounces are coming into this armor profile. And look at the gun, the drive-by. And it's a heavier tank. It's a bigger tank than the IS-5. This Reveler Reese, like, trying to do the business. In it. Look at the, the turret on this thing. It's firing HE at the turret because it can't pen. Oh, hello. Uh, yep, that's a, lot of, that's a lot of gun. It's going to shoot something else. Um, yeah. Yeah. Bouncing the BL-10. Um, yeah. Wow. So I'm playing a lot of Tier 7. <laughs> That's still crazy. I just worry. I worry about the amount of premium crate tanks that are coming into the game every... Like... The constant, remember how crazy the player base went when the M60 turned up. Remember the insane angst when the M60 turned up. And now we hardly bat an eyelid. Um, it's it's kind of nutty. It's absolutely nutty to me. Um, this tank is brilliant. It is well worth a drive. If you own it, congratulations. It is absolutely gorgeous. Um, look at the damage blocked on this. This is 2270 damage blocked. And it is just... It's just absolutely crazy. The only thing really petting him effectively has been a tier... Uh, a tier 8 TD with one of the most famous guns in the game. The BL, uh, BL-10. BL Back in the start of Blitz, that gun was feared. Just absolutely feared on the Object 704 and the uh, ISU-152. And now, like, the Reveler Reese is firing HE. He's firing HE because he can't pen this tank. Like, the Rev was struggling before, but honest to God, there are some giants in the waters now. And you have to be seriously... Like, 4,400 damage... 4650 blocked. Holy ball sacks. Look after yourselves, boys and girls. Uh, stay safe in the battlefield and uh, tuck up tight at the back of the map if you see one of these things. Until next time, bye for now.